I was born October 26, 1911. I lived in a three-room house with 12 other family members and a dog on Pitt Street in the Black Pearl District of Carrollton, New Orleans. See, I was born with these here bowed legs. The doctor wanted to break them, to straighten them out, but my mama was all right with my legs being different. She would just rub them down with greasy dishwater salve, and then we would dance. Oh, I felt so free when I danced with my mama. Oh, and the white folks she used to clean houses for, they liked to see us dance, too. Mm -hmm. And at home, my cousin Edward would tell stories and play records of of Ma Rainey and Mamie Smith and Bessie Smith, oh, the blues. Oh, and Mama and me, we would just dance. Oh, the blues really influenced my singing, so much so that my singing was compared to the singing styles of Bessie Smith my whole life. When I was five years old, my mama died, and since my daddy, Johnny Jr., had gone off and married and started a new family shortly after I was born. My aunt, Mahala, who I was named after, we called her Aunt Duke, she was left to raise me and my brother. Oh, and she was so hard on us. She worked us. Education wasn't an option. Oh, life was real hard without my mama. So I would sing, you know, them blues tunes. Mm -hmm. To remember when I was free and dancing with my mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was when I was at the church house, Mount Moriah Baptist Church. Oh, singing those songs made me feel the most free. Oh, so much so that I was baptized by my pastor there, E.D. Lawrence, right in the Mississippi River. Then in 1927, I moved to Chicago amidst the Great Migration. And I went to this church and, and I sang. It was open for testimonies and I got up and I sang a song. Then I was immediately invited to join their choir and go touring. We toured all of Chicago, mm -hmm. every city in Chicago <laughs> and neighboring cities mm -hmm. at church choirs. And during that time, I sang with the Johnson Gospel Singers. They were one of the first gospel singing groups, you know. And in 1929, I met Thomas A. Dorsey. Mm, Y'all know him. <laughs> we would tour singing his, he was a great composer. We would tour churches and conventions singing his music. Precious Lord. That became one of my signature songs. In 1936, I married a man that was 10 years older than me. His name was Isaac Lanes Glenn Hawkenhole. I just called him Ike. <laughs> and in 1937, I got up with the signing with the Decca Choral label, and we recorded my second set of records. Uh, they didn't do so well. Didn't make much money and the label dropped me. My husband Ike was a graduate of Fisk University and Tuskegee Institute. Mm -hmm. He was also a gambler that expected me to abandon my vow to the only sing the Lord's music and go sing secular music to support his habit. That didn't work out for him so much, and we were divorced in 1941. 
Then, in 1947, I signed with the Apollo label. And in 1948, got with William Herbert Brewster. And we recorded, move on up a little higher. <laughs> That's, that record sold eight million copies. They couldn't keep them on the shelf. Old folk knew my name in the US and then soon they knew it in Europe too. Oh, and I went from singing in churches and at conventions to singing in concert halls. I, I was the first gospel singer, the first colored gospel singer to sing at Carnegie Hall. Yes. Oh, they wanted me on their TV shows and in their motion pictures. All I was doing was singing those songs that made me feel free and hoping it would help other folk feel just as free as I felt singing them. Oh, I was singing about God. I even sang on Sesame Street in my lifetime. He got the whole world in his hand. <laughs> but perhaps the moment I'm most proud is when I got to sing uh, to free our people. Mm. That March on Washington in 1963, just before Dr. King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech, I stood and I sang, I been buke and I been scone I been buke and I been scone I I've been bugle Lord, and I've been scorned. I've been talked about, shows you bone. Folks steady talking about my contributions to gospel music. I'm in this Hall of Fame and that Hall of Fame. You know, the National Academy for Recording Arts and Science created the gospel category for me, um, making me the first to win that prestigious award for gospel music. I got that Grammy. Hmm. And then 1972, on January 27th, I took my last breath here on earth mm -hmm. in Evergreen Park, Illinois. Oh, but the music still lives on. A oh, funny thing, we still not as free as we want to be. Hmm. But if we keep on singing, uh, mm -hmm, one day we will be. Mm. I'm Mahalia Jackson, and this has been a moment in back history.